I'm going to go slowly just at the beginning, a little bit slowly, just in case people are still, they're just waiting for the kettle to boil. They've just pulled the tea on the tea bag. They're just getting the milk out of the fridge because they're coming back at 11.30. So I'm just going to do a little preamble. I'm going to tell you that there's a code, a discount code. We all like one of those, don't we? Um, I've made a discount code for the Millicent family. That's not just for a family whose surname is Millicent that are watching. It's for the mini Miss Millicent uh, kit, okay? Ooh. And it's for the magnificent Millicent, which is just a larger version of mini Miss Millicent, which is the one I'm showing you how to make today. But you can make this one in exactly the same way. I thought one was closer and one was further away then. It's got all those jokes coming out now. And uh, that's the, the magnificent Millicent kit. And then there's a third member of the Millicent family, which is brilliant Millicent. And that's a lampshade kit. I haven't actually got the actual lampshade here, sorry. Um, so there's 15% off all of those kits with the code Millicent15, all one word, capital letters, Millicent, M I L L I C E N T 1 5, will give you 15% off interminably into the future. So, well, I can't guarantee that if you're watching this on YouTube in five years' time, that we'll even still be here. Um, <laughs> but fingers crossed, but you never know. Uh, so, yes, you put that in at the checkout and it will give you 15% off those kits if you're interested. I'll repeat that at the end because um, I haven't whetted your appetite to make it yet. Uh, so the one I'm going to be making today is the Mini Miss Millicent. So the only th other things that you need to make this kit, are we nearly, oh, we're at 11.30 now, is the Mini Bamboo Mat and Netting. So again, we sell that as a little kit as well, which is called the Mini Basic Kit for Wet Felting on our, on our website, and that's 5.95, okay? So you will need one of those, but of course you can use that over and over again, so you don't need to keep buying it each time. So this one is uh, completely seamless, as are all my bag kits and everything like that, so there's no sewing involved, and it is made completely wet felted, so there's no needle felting involved, okay? I'm gonna show you from scratch, right from the beginning, but I can't go through the whole process, a, because we don't have time, B, because we need um, access to hot, hot and cold water. But I'm just going to outline it. And then I've got other videos on YouTube if you don't know the basics of how to do wet felting and how to rinse and roll and all of that kind of thing. So I suggest looking at another video if you don't know all the details. But let's crack on with this one to start with. So in the kit, let me show you what you get in the kit when you pour it out. There's loads of goodness in here. First of all, you get the plastic template, which we're going to work around, so that's really important. Then you get all the yarn in all the lots of different colors. Ooh, there's even more. And then you also get um, the instructions as well, which are really important. But now you've got this video as well, so that's helpful too. You've got an inside color and a basic outside color. The inside color is peppermint green, so you get some of that. The outside color base is pale blue, so there's a bigger amount of that. And then you've got your sort of graduated colors here, and then you've got all your flower colors. And then you also get some Angelina sparkles just to add into the background as well. So that's the basics of what's in your kit. So I'm just going to start using these colors here. 
let me just pop those back in there and we will also need the template right so if you've never made a wet felted bag before you work around a template shape which determines the shape and the size of the bag that you're going to end up with it's usually rolled up in your kit so i always just roll it in the opposite direction just to flatten it out a little bit um, but what you need to remember is that this template is probably about 15 to 20 percent bigger than the finished thing okay because it always shrinks when you make felt it always always shrinks and that's good you want it to shrink that's part of the process okay so it usually shrinks by about 15 percent ish all right so this is the shape we're going to start with and that's how it's going to end up so whenever you're cutting a template shape always bear that in mind the way it works is we're going to layer the wool tops and this is wool tops unspun wool over the template shape with overlap and we're going to go at it from both sides we're going to keep turning it over and we're going to build the wool tops up around the template shape then we're going to rub it with soap and water as we go and also at the end and then at the end you snip the top open you take out the the, the template plastic and you're left with what was around it so you can imagine if we just pretend this is the same shape and size as this now now it's shrunk you're left with this in the middle. So the very first thing that you put down against the template shape is the inside colour of the bag. It's a bit difficult to get your head around it when you first do it. You have to kind of think inside out. But that's the very first thing that you do. So I'm going to just talk you through that now and show you exactly how you do that. And that's using this peppermint here. Just before I do though, what you're going to need to do when you take the peppermint out of the bag is you're going to need to split it in half. Now, when you pull wool tops apart, it's important to hold your hands apart from one another, not really close together because of the length of the fibers. So you hold your hands apart from one another, pull gently like this, and it comes apart really easily. If you hold your hands really close together, you're holding on to the fibers and you can't pull it apart. That's the first thing. So one side of this, one piece of this is for one side of the bag and the other piece is for the other side of the bag. OK, so the very first thing to just mention is the length of the wool tops. Like I was just saying, you've got to hold your hands apart when you pull them apart. When you're pulling these fibres away and releasing them from the piece, you need to hold the piece down here about six to eight inches down if you hold it too near the top you can't pull them off so it's the same deal so make sure you're holding it nice nice way down like that and if i just pull some off actually and just hold them like that you can see they go all the way down to about here so you don't want to be holding on to the ones that you're trying to pull away and release okay so the next thing to remember is that you're only just taking grabbing hold of the very ends of the wool tops so you've got a really really wispy amount can you see that i think if i hold that there you can hardly any i mean obviously some but not a lot <laughs> so what you don't want to do is you don't want to just pull off a great big wadgy great big bit like that no that's wrong too many too much okay it won't work very well you want to release just the ends of the fibers like this let me just show you the difference so this is yes this is no mark me mark me um god we watched that's just reminded me we started watching game of thrones last night i just i don't even know if i can i can deal with it but anyway first episode done only another 5367 million to go um so you can see that massive piece that i just pulled off i'm actually splitting up into five six seven more pieces because you just don't want it to be that thick as you're laying it down you've got to the reason being, let me just talk to you about why, the reason being each of these m little tiny fibres, okay, has to intermingle with all the others, get friendly and into, like knit together, okay, and then all of its little microscopic scales on each of the individual fibres open, they interlock and then they shut down. A bit like when you shrink a, shrink a jumper, you can't unshrink a jumper, it's permanently sort of fixed together. That's the environment we're going to recreate when we're wet felting. So that's why you want to everything to be a little bit open and, and, and free so that it has the chance to knit together. Because if it's in a clump, it will felt, but it would just felt into a clump. Nobody needs a felted clump, do they? 
uh, especially not if you're trying to make a nice felt bag. Okay, so that's why we're teasing it out like this, not teasing it, we're releasing it in a very sort of wispy way. Okay, so if you do want to go back to the overhead shot, Chris, por favor, um, I'm just going to move that up a bit actually, so we're in the right place. Are we there with the Instagrammies? I think we are. Um, as you can see, I'm covering this side of the template. I'm laying all of the fibres in the same direction, so they're all going horizontally, okay? And I'm also adding overlap over the edge, because this overlap is the bit that's going to go round to the other side, and it's going to give me my sort of seam, if you like. And then I'm just going to continue slightly overlapping them as I pull the wool fibres apart. Let me show you again. So I'm holding it down here. I'm just grabbing the very ends of the fibres with that sort of paddy bit at the base of my thumb and my fingertips. And I'm just releasing them like so, okay? So just adding them in and just layering them up and not, not make, just making sure that I haven't got too many and making sure that I've got a nice, at least about an inch on, on a bag this side I would, size, I would say. Um, around the edge as well and, and people always say to me well how do I know when I've got enough okay and it's basically when you can't really see the template underneath anymore so let me just finish the whole thing to start with and then I can um, explain what I mean about not being able to see the template underneath so you can see I'm just pulling and, and laying as I go and then making sure I've got my overlap and then I'm just going to do one final lot over here. Now, this mini Miss Millicent bag is only two layers thick. So if you make larger bags, or some of my other bag kits are three layers thick, so they have sort of more kind of rigidity and they're sort of slightly stronger. But this one's only two. So I would urge you to use up the piece that I've given you to make both sides of this. So I'm just going to carry on now. Can you see now where there's like little patches that are slightly darker here, okay? So they might be, have slightly less wool on them. So I'm just going to add a little bit more over those areas like so, okay? And then, oh, that's a massive bit. Get off, we don't want you. And then I'm just, then I'm gonna be fairly confident that it's quite even. Now, if you're still left with a little bit uh, left over like I am, put it in the center of the bag because the edges, by the nature of the way this works, the edges always build up more than the center panel because you're folding the edges over each time. So if you do end up with a little bit of excess, then you should always just pop that into the middle like so. So all of my fibres have been laid left to right, okay. It doesn't really matter which way you start, but with this bag, I like to do this graduation going this way. So that's why I start off with the inside layer going this way, okay. So that's my reasoning behind that. Right, now then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my piece of netting, which actually was here from two weeks ago and I was making daffodils, and I've just noticed it's covered in yellow wool. Let me just get rid of that. Um, so my netting goes over the top. This is a slightly larger piece than you would get if you buy our mini mat kit. So the mini mat kit's this big and you would get a piece of net that would cover that, which is fine for this, it's big enough, okay. So covering that, then what you need is some uh, soapy water. Now, this is literally a squirt of washing up liquid, if you're in the States, liquid detergent. Filling that up with um, lukewarm water. So you don't want you don't want it to be really hot. You don't want it to be really cold. You just want tepid, okay? Because then it won't shock the the wool and it won't shrink it and felt it really quickly. So keep your water tepid. Don't use too much washing up liquid, okay? Because it'll get really frothy and really foamy and slightly out of control, and you, nobody needs that. So the other thing I wanted to say was you can spray it on but it's much easier. It's quite handy having a spray bottle for doing some bits with felting, but I like to just sort of sprinkle it on. So you could get a, like an old milk carton and put a hole in the top or whatever's easiest. Oh, that's the one I was using from last week. Um, this is the one that I made yesterday. Not that there's any difference actually. Um, and then I'm going to get a dishcloth, all right? So this is a common or garden dishcloth, doesn't matter what sort. And then I'm just going to push the soapy water through the fibres until it's completely wet down. Okay, I know a lot of you have seen me do this before, but I'm just going to quickly show you this bit. 
and then I'm just going to run through um, how to lay out the fibres for the rest of the bag because I think that's the interesting thing about this and how you do that. But it's really important that you do when you wet this down. One of the one of the sort of the sticking points for some people uh, and where they where they go wrong sometimes is that they don't use enough water or they use too much water. So there obviously is a little bit of a fine line. You need to use enough soapy water so that you don't have any air left in it, but you don't want to use so much that you end up with a swimming pool situation um, around the bag that you're making. So just make sure that you've got enough in there so that it's nice and soapy, but not outrageously soapy. So kind of like that. You need to get it to the point where you can write your name in the bubbles. I'm just gonna add a little bit more like so and then i'm just going to add a little bit of soap over the top now it's going to be any old soap okay this is just a cheapy cheapy bar of soap from the supermarket or i've got another bar of soap here that's mm, that smells delicious that's olive oil soap it do really doesn't matter it's the alkalinity of the soap that's important so don't worry about what sort of soap you're using um what you want to get to is this kind of situation with the wetness. So completely flat, completely wet, no air pockets, no bounciness about it. And then enough suds so that you can write your name in the soap. Really, really important. And then you can see the shape of the template here. This is the bit we're rubbing. We're not rubbing the outside bits. They're going to get folded round in a minute. So we're just rubbing the centre bit here just for a couple of minutes. I'm not going to bore you with that. But what you find sometimes is that sometimes some of the fibres come through the net. If they do, just pull them off. But you're just rubbing that just for a couple of minutes just to get it on its way. Now, if it's nice and soapy like mine is, you should be able to very, very easily peel this back now. OK, so I'm just going to peel it back and show you. It's slightly thin around the edges, but that's fine because they're going to get built up when we wrap things around. OK, and then what I'm going to do is very calmly just pick this up and flip it over onto the other side. Goodness, that was very calm. Very calm, always very calm. Would you like any questions? Yes, please, give me a question, uh, far away with is a question. The, this is Addy on Facebook. Hi. Is the template that plasticized baking parchment type stuff? No, it isn't actually. It is literally, it's a bit like pond liner. It's just, we sell it, we sell it by the, the square meter or the meter, I think it's a meter square, something like that. It's only a couple of pounds. It's people, we always get asked about this. It's reusable if you iron it. That's the first thing I'd say. So you're not chucking loads of plastic away, but it's great because it needs to be malleable enough to get rolled in the bamboo mat, but it also needs to be thick enough for you to feel the edge of it and know where it is. So you don't want to use like a polythene bag because it would be too thin and, and it, would uh, it would rock up too easily. You want it to keep its shape, but, uh, it needs to be malleable, it needs to be sort of foldable. Right, I'm just going to fold the edges in. Okay. Can I ask another question? Oh yeah, go ahead, yeah. This, this, you'll like this one. Mm -hmm. uh, Teresa on Facebook, mm -hmm. she says, when you say the alkalinity of the soap, mm -hmm. what should we be aiming for? All, all soap is alkaline, okay? All soap is alkaline. What I'm saying is, it's that aspect of the soap that's important. The fact that it's soap is what's important. So don't worry about buying expensive soap. You don't need to buy special felting soap. You just need common or garden soap that you buy from the supermarket and that you're, you're the chemist to get the cheapest if you like, or you can get one with your essential oils in it that smells gorgeous, or you can get a moisturizing one. Some people like the olive oil soap because it has slightly less lava so in a sense, that maybe interferes with the fibres of the felting if you want to get really technical. The reason I go on about this is I know that some companies produced or do sell special felting soap, which is a liquid. That's absolute nonsense. I've never used Ooh. it. Not only that, but it doesn't get soapy, like lathery. So it doesn't help you rub it. And I actually don't understand what it's for at all. So I'm just trying to stop people from going off and buying lots of specialist soap you don't need it you just need normal soap all right okay if we can uh, go back to this right so wrapping your edges in Christopher yeah. yes pay attention please I Overhead am paying shot, attention please. I was going to ask another question um, before you were oh, so rude go on then. Oh, so rude so rude, so um, rude. Uh, rude is the netting that. included in the kit yes, yes. it is yes. okay yeah the overlap becomes more than an inch 
How do you matter. get it to fold so it isn't bulky? Okay, I'm going to show you that now, but don't okay. worry, I'm going to show you that now. So if you go to the overhead, let me talk about yes, overlap. Yes, lady. Yes, lady. So you can see here it is more than an inch, it's about two inches actually. It doesn't matter. This kind of thing is not Delia Smith, it's more Jamie Oliver in terms of wham bam, thank you ma'am, bish bash bosh, give it a smash. It's not set in stone, there's no straight lines, it's all a bit curvy. It doesn't matter ish it's all a bit ish okay now if you have a lot of overlap you can pull some of it off like i could pull some of that away but it's just not really necessary you don't need to worry too much about it unless it's ridiculously large like if it covered the whole thing maybe pull a bit away what's important here though is this edge all right it's about keeping it tight to this edge and these little folds don't really matter you're not you're not going to notice them or see them because because you're going to add more wool to this it's all going to felt together you're going to roll it and roll it and roll it and you're never going to see them so really don't worry too much about the little folds don't worry about doing hospital corners the only thing i would say is that at the top here it's always good this is the line we're going to open at the end we're going to cut this open so it's always good to make sure this top edge is fully bonded so when you're bringing an edge over like this it's good just to fluff up the edge a little bit and make it tease it out and make it a little bit looser and then maybe take it over to the other side so you've got a lovely sort of properly felted top edge that's the most important thing so is keeping it to the shape because if it splays out from the shape you're going to end up with a ridge around your bag like a mohican so you need to keep it really tight to the shape to the edge of the bag that's the most important thing then we're on to the second um, side of it so so far I've done the equivalent of one side of the inside of the bag. So now I'm going to do the other side of the inside of the bag because I've turned it over. So I'm just going to get my other piece of the inside colour and I'm just going to pull it off in exactly the same way. So again, I'm overlapping this and it seems weird because it seems like I've already got an edge, but this is going to, again, it's going to go over and it's just going to make it stronger and it's going to make it... Um, come together better. So just to show you in slow motion again, pulling the, the, um, the wool tops apart, okay? So holding it six to eight inches down, taking it with the hand. I usually, you, you people use the hand they write with. Just taking the very edge of the fibers, the full width, so you don't wanna be just pulling off a little bit. Take the full width of the fibers and then just release them so that you're getting about that sort of amount, okay? And then I'm just going to lay that down over the top as we go okay so again we're doing overlap so you can see there's an overlap around the bottom we're going to do that all the way around the whole bag again i'm just going to go from the top down again like so and i'm just going to speed felt now and just do it really quickly i'm sure you're going to take much more care over this but i have done it approximately three million times before so um <laughs> i can afford to go a little bit faster and um just keep going until you've used up that piece because like i said this this bag's only two layers thick so you really need to make sure you've used all the walls so that it's thick enough at the end okay there we go so i've used it all up this time so the same thing happens would you like me to just go over the 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 wetting down again or are you all bored by that and know exactly what to do i'll just do it super fast so adding the soapy water don't add so much that you get a swimming pool situation where it's all running onto the floor but just do enough so that you um can get it nicely wet down Addie nice Osborne is asking, can you use old-fashioned soap flakes? Um, some people do use old-fashioned soap flakes, and I feel ill-qualified, really, to comment further, because I've never used them myself. So oh. I do know that in some of the older books and instructions that I've seen over the years, people did use soap, soap flakes for felting. So it's very possible if you've got some i don't know many people that have got soap flakes or use soap flakes but if you do have some and you want to try then by all means do and i can't see that it would cause any harm i mean i think you know um the washing up liquid is very useful because it 
it's obviously a liquid already so it gets into the very core of it but having said that sometimes it's hard to get out if you if you use too much and so when you're rinsing and rinsing and rinsing sometimes it causes further shrinkage if you have to rinse it for longer and manipulate it for longer to get all the soap out so it's worth bearing in mind if you don't want to use washing up liquid so again just a couple of minutes rubbing there and just rubbing the main body of the bag not the overlap necessarily and then pulling that um, netting off okay and then we're going to turn it over again and we're going to immediately bring those edges in again so never forget to bring the edges around and fold them in otherwise you'll have a very strange looking bag at the end of it you can see where it, where it is a little bit bulky I'm just sort of on autopilot here really I'm just uh, explaining what I'm doing where it is a little bit bulky I just sort of spread it out a little bit with my fingers but again when it comes over here I just like to sort of tease that up and out bring it over to get a lovely finished edge at the top there that's quite important okay so that is our first layer done all right and then obviously we're going to now move on to the outside of the bag so the inside of the bag is done okay now we're moving on to the outside and I've got one that I've prepared earlier but I'm now thinking I could just go through it right from scratch I'm just going to dry my hands won't be a second because <clears throat> it's really difficult to um to use dry fibers when you've got wet hands because they stick to you basically so blue okay so we're using the blue it's split in half again half of the back half of the front we're using the blue as a background as a base color okay um again we're pulling it off in the same way but this time we're going to go vertically okay Ooh. um and we're going to use slightly less of it in terms of you don't need to create do this too thickly apart from maybe slightly more at the top okay and the reason for this is because we're going to then create um a fade going down here okay let me just do it i did i prepared one yesterday because i wasn't sure how much i was going to actually go through but let me just put the blue on and then i'm going to just talk you through the fade i think let's do that next because some people uh struggle to to use the wool fi sort of finely enough to create this kind of ombre effect so you really don't need too much of this down at the bottom because it's going to get covered up basically i'm just going to put a little bit on just so it pokes <coughs> through a tiny bit here and there so that's the kind of thing you're after you want a decent overlap on this side so just bear that in mind because it will help you finish the bag off on the other side when you get to it okay but you've got four fade colours here. So um, I am actually just going to bring in the one that I prepared earlier now. Let me just slide him forward. Okay. So you can see um, that we are now going to create this fade. So we go from a dark olive through to a sage, through to a duck egg, through to a turquoise, and we end up at the blue. And we also add the little Angelina uh, sprinkles as well, okay, which you can probably just about see glistening here and shining. So they're quite subtle, but they're, they're in there. So starting with the dark olive at the bottom. So when I'm doing this, I am pulling off maybe half to a third of the amount that I was using before, okay? So really, really wispy bits of, of fibres, okay? And I'm just going to start at the bottom. Let me just take the flowers off for a sec, because we'll come to that in a second. And let's just do the fade first of all, okay? So we're starting at the bottom. And then we're going to keep overlapping the fibres here as we're laying them down. So I'm just going to start off with a bit of that. And then I'm going to move to the sage colour. And I'm just going to add a tiny bit of that over the top. And I'm just overlapping it as I go. Okay. Then I'm going to move on to the duck egg. So all of these colours come in the kit. Oops, let's just get rid of the end bit. Um, so just again, overlapping it as I go like this. So it's really quite subtle. Oops, not completely covering it up though, Gillian. Pay attention. Okay, so it's quite subtle, this fade, okay? 
um, and you just need to go back over it a few times until you're happy with it. So then moving up onto the turquoise up here and then just leaving that little bit of blue at the top. And then I'm just going to show you how I lay in the Angelina as well. So let me just grab the Angelina. Uh, you get quite a lot in the pack actually, you don't need as much as this at all. So you just take a little tiny pinch of it and you would just sprinkle that on um, as you wish. You can put it anywhere actually, but I tend to put it just at the top. And then really I'm just going to go all over that now just to sort of make it more even. So I'm just going to add a little bit more of the sage at the bottom. Now interestingly when you pull this off you're always going to get a tapering end from the bit that you've pulled off, okay, and more of a hard line from where you've pulled it. So I tend, if I want, I tend to use the tapering bit more than the hard edge bit at the bottom, okay. So I've got the hard edge going down and the tapering going up, okay. So let's just do that to start with like that. Then I'm going to use a bit more of the sage over the top. Obviously now you're gonna see both ends, but I'm interested maybe in seeing the tapering there now because I'm gonna cover that up, okay? So now I'll do it the other way around. And I'm just pulling off really small amounts now. I hope, hopefully you can see that I'm keeping it really, really, like hardly any. And then I'm going to move back to the duck egg just like to just get my bits the right sort of length uh, the right sort of sort of density like that and you can see that you can you can work on it back and forth until you're happy you might want more of one color you might want more of another color obviously poetic license how oops however you want it to look is absolutely fine i think what i'm just trying to get across here is that you hardly use any all right so i'm just going to go over that and then i'm just going to finish off with a tiny bit more of the blue at the top because i just want to reiterate that this angelina glitter fiber must always be covered up so you can never just leave it sitting on the top if you just leave it it will um essentially it will just slide off because it is just plasticky glitter um it's not very environmentally friendly i'm sure you can get i don't know you can probably get f environmentally friendly glitter but it probably dissolves in water um, anyway uh, it's sort of plasticky strands so you do need to sort of sandwich it in between the wool tops if you're using it okay but you can see it does still shine through a little bit now it does that seems a bit heavy to me actually so um I'm just going to add a little bit more of the sage, I think, and I'm going to go with my tapered end that way, and then I'm then I'm going to move on to showing you the flowers, all right, and how you do the leaves and the flowers. Okay, and then I'm just going to do one tiny bit more of that, just going down to the bottom. Now, of course, when you're doing this, the other thing to bear in mind is where the edges of your bag are, so don't forget that. Um, it's good before you start the flowers actually to just press that down there's my edge there okay so I know that my edges are there so I don't want my flowers to be going off the edge then also at the top and then also bear in mind where your handle is going to be if you're going to cut the handle if you're making it into just a pouch that you're going to sit on your dressing table and put your cotton wool in you probably don't need a handle but if you want it as a little bag you need to think well, my handle's going there, so I don't really want to do flowers where my handle's going to be. Right, so the next thing that happens now, if I can just slide this down, I can have the bag and that in shorts, couldn't I? And that would be very impressive. How's that? Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to add some stems. So really, really tiny bits, okay? Just elongate them, okay? And then it's up to you where you pop them, but... I'm just going to do a couple of dark ones like that. Then we've also included in some other greens for you to do stems in other colours as well. I think I might have even popped a turquoise in when I was doing it. So um, just elongate. So tiny bit of, of wool. You really don't need these to be very thick, okay? And just pull them out as you lay them down because you don't want them to be really solid. You want them to be really wispy. So the act of you kind of elongating it out will make that happen and it won't be quite so... Um, thick you don't want it to be thick and then I'm just going to use some slightly smaller little bits of the citrus 
and I'm just going to bring them in from the bottom. So it's like you've got some foliage coming up from the bottom here. And you can do this as much or as little as you want. So um, it's really sort of poetic license here. Make it your own. You could even use some more bits of the of the sage if you if you want to. And, and then maybe just add a few little tiny bits of the of this at the bottom. Actually, it'd be nicer to add some more bits of this. So if you want to do leaves, you can just get a little bit of green, pull the end, ends off. You can twiddle the ends a little bit, technical term there, twiddle. And you can just add those going up and down the plants as you want. OK, so that's that. Now, moving on to the flowers. OK, the, the main emphasis here is on how little wool you use. So you really don't need very much at all. So I'm just going to bring the flower colours in here. All right, so if we start off maybe with a couple of daffodils, because they're nice and easy. So it is a case of, let me just show you, taking the tiniest, tiniest bit of fluff, okay? If I hold this over something, oh, there you go, you can see. Just the tiniest, tiniest bit of fluff. And I'm just going to manipulate it round into a sort of rough, round shape. But what you don't want to do is you want, you don't want to sort of turn it into like a little bird's IP. So let me just explain what I mean. So what not to do, if you go out um, to slightly wider shot, please, Chris, what not to do would be to do that, okay, and make a really, really dense little felted ball because that is going to just turn into a ball and then it's going to fall off, okay. What you really want to do is make sure that it's really open like that. In fact, I'm just going to get the other colour as well and then I'm going to get a tiny tiny bit of orange as you often see as we did daffodils last week and just pop that in there like that so what's really nice is to use a combination of the colours so we've given you in the kit we've given you brilliant yellow bright yellow we've given you gold and we've given you orange so when you're pulling the wool off you've got loads of it in here you don't need anywhere near as much as we give you um, but just nice to just pull the bits off together okay and you could even use I don't know well, we've got lots of different flowers to do, so let's just stick with this. Um, but you can see how I'm doing those to start with. OK, so really just bringing it round into a little circle. And it's just more of the same, OK? If you're going to do these little poppies here, we're going to start off by using some of this dark red that we give you, and then maybe just a tad of the bright red that we give you. And again, just bringing it round into a little circle like this. The, when you actually wet felt it together, it's going to sort of make it uh, close up and become deeper and more intense, okay? Just so Addy, Addy on Facebook is saying it's like painting with wool. Yes, absolutely. Can you hold different colours of the wool tops together, pull them out, at the same time and mix them so yes well, that's what colors. i was just that's what i was just doing so oh, okay. we're taking a tiny bit of the dark red a tiny watching. bit of the light red <laughs> that's okay and i'm just mixing them together like that and then i'm just going to pop them down and then if you wanted to give it a dark center you could use some of this really deep um dark green okay and just pop that in the middle to make it look like a poppy center like that okay and then the same thing here i've mixed the colors together on this um, long flower stem there. I think this is mixed, it says it in the instructions, but I think this is mixed using orange and pink. Okay, so again, just tiny, tiny bits. And you could fold it over and you can just twist the end slightly to give you this kind of pointed shape. And then you could pop that down like that. And all of these are going to sort of change and shift slightly as you um, felt them together and as they get wet felted together. But you know, you can. Um, when you first wet it down, you can alter things slightly so that you can make them look exactly how you want. So you can see how I'm building it up here. Then if you wanted to use the different purples together, you get a couple of purples in the kit. Uh, same thing, fold those in half, just twist the ends slightly. Make sure, the, the, the key thing to make sure is that you um, are never creating that little bird's IP. You're never creating something that's really, really solid and thick and that you always make sure that it's nice and even. So although I'm twiddling it between my finger and thumb here, it's still gauzy and fibrous and open, okay? It's never a tight thing, a tight little ball, okay? So just carry on doing that really until you're happy with the overall look of the thing. I'm not gonna bore you all to tears. Anyone got any more questions just while I do a few more little tiny flowers and then I'll show you how to wet this down. 
Uh, no. Got, no, we've done all the questions. Okay. So let me just put another couple of bits on. How are we doing for time? Uh, who knows? I can't remember what time we yeah, started. Yeah, well, we started we, at 11.30, so now it's 5 past 12. We started okay. at 25 past, so... Oh, yeah, okay. All right, so just another couple of purple ones. I'm just going to put in here like so. And then, you know, you can uh, mess around with this till you're happy. But that's the basic idea, that you hardly use any of the wall tops. There is um, another question. Yes, yeah, sorry, go Which on. is Jay Allen on mm. YouTube. Yeah. Can you wet them before you put them on to keep them in place? Mm, you can. I never work like that personally, but if you really wanted to, you could do. But I prefer to work dry and then I wet it down. And I'll show you why next, actually, because when we do wet it down properly, um, everything will shift slightly. So it's kind of pointless. I think, I don't know, I enjoy creating with it all dry. Um, I don't know why, but I do. Um, you could wet it down, absolutely. If that's how you want to work, yes. But I think that uh, it changes so much when you wet it down. It has a whole different look to it. So I prefer to create the whole thing dry, then wet it, then take a view on it, and then kind of add and subtract things or just change it up, change it up a bit till I'm happy. A um, Amy on Facebook, I don't quite know what this means. Maybe it means something to you. Mm. Could you use pieces of core wool fluff for the flowers? Core wool? As it may be spun So wool? when you're needle felting, some people use a cheaper wool in the core of their needle felted shapes. So if you're needle felting, I don't know, uh, a dog, say, for example, you may have a cheaper, rougher, coarser, less desirable... Um, wool top for the centre of the shape so maybe not the lovely merino um, that's what core wool is so you may have some of that at home this is all merino in this kit okay what you can't do when you're wet felting very easily is felt two different sorts of wool together it's not easy because they are of a different count they're of a different so the the scales are different sizes the length of the fibers are different and it's very very difficult take it from me to get them to join together when you're rubbing okay so the answer to your question if you want to add in more of your own wool to the kit that you're doing from us if it's not merino the same merino that we use which is 23 micron i think off the top of my head um the answer is probably no, actually, because it won't wet felt in. Needle felting is a different uh, kettle of fish. Needle felting, yes, you probably can. But with fe wet felting, no. Also, I mean, I really struggle with the whole core wool thing because we don't necessarily use that here. I, uh, we do sell cheap, slightly cheaper British wools on our wool tops on our website. Uh, which you could use in the middle of something. But I always say, if you actually weigh uh, the item that you've made at the end, it usually weighs a few grams. And the cost difference in the wool is negligible. And I just wouldn't worry about it. So when I'm needle felting small shapes, I just tend to use our merino because it comes in over 70 different colours. So you've got this massive palette of wonderfulness. So why bring in some other cheaper inferior <laughs> wool um, to save 10 pence. I mean, you know, you can do when you're needle felting, but with this, I wouldn't bother. Okay, so that's that. I just wanted to explain though, where I put it, uh, exactly the same deal for Magnificent Millicent, but on a larger scale. So it comes with the same colors, the same graduation. I think, you, I don't know, you might get slightly more colors of wool with for the flowers. Uh, but there's essentially just more of it and you end up with a bigger bag, okay? And it's the same deal with the, the lampshade as well. When you're, when you're making the lampshade, actually, it's actually more straightforward because you're not making a 3D shape with the lampshade. You're making a flat piece and then you're just fixing it around the lampshade um, metal top that's included in the pack. So that's actually even easier. Okay, all right, so I just want to show you one more thing, really. Um, I'm not gonna go through the whole bag making process, but I will outline it in a second. But what I want to show you first is actually wetting this down. So pretend I've finalized this. I know I haven't, I've done it really quickly. Um, but I am just gonna wet this down now, and I'm just gonna show you how to adjust your design if 
Let me move this up the table a bit. I feel like we've gone down too far. Let's go to there. Is that better? Yeah. Um, I want to show you how you can change it up if you're not happy with it once you've wet it down. So again, I've put the soapy water all over the top. I, probably put, I haven't put enough, actually, because this is yesterday's bag, which will have dried out, thinking it through. Um, so let's just add a bit more. So just going to completely wet this down. Now, the very act of doing this is going to just move some of the fibres around a little bit and they're just going to get a little bit wibbly wobbly okay um but i'll show you how to sort that out so there's the edge of my bag there okay and you can kind of see it through the net make sure it's all completely soaked up and soapy so let me just add a little bit more of that over the top because having it soapy will allow you before you've rubbed it don't rub it to just immediately peel the net back without lifting any of the design it just needs to be nice and soapy there we go oops famous last words okay so what you can do now is you, you can see now how that's kind of shifted a little bit so if there's something about that that you don't really like you can now change it so if you feel like something's out of place or maybe you feel like there's a little bit of orange missing off one of your daffodils you can add that in and obviously it is now wet okay uh, so it, it, you know I know someone uh, asked earlier if you could work wet so this is the point at which I would work wet I would start with it dry then I would just do this and you know you can take things off you can reposition them you can add things in um, and, and just fiddle about with it until you're happy with it so I'll take that off there for example because it's too big and so on so really just jig this about make sure you're happy I just use the uh, the ends of my fingertips my fingernails to do it but you could just as easily use a tiny little pair of scissors if you wanted to if you find that easier and you could do it like that and then we could add a little bit more on and so on and so forth any questions about that or should I just quickly wrap up the rest of how you would do this uh, no Maddie Hughes has got a question about rolling, but I'm not going to ask it yet. I'm going <laughs> to wait until you start rolling. <laughs> All right, okay. So um, what happens next, if you come back to me, what happens next is that we put the net back over the top of this once you're happy with it and we rub this for about half an hour or so until all of the fibers have really bonded together. And you've got a window of opportunity of about five minutes that you can keep taking the net back, you can keep readjusting it, and then you put the net back and then eventually after about five minutes it started to literally take hold and you can't really change any more and kind of stuck with what you've got at that point okay um so you need to do that for about half an hour then we're going to need to finish the back of the bag i'm not going to go through the whole of that now but i will just outline it very briefly if you can go back to the overhead shot please chris um just finishing the back of the bag, you're bringing in all of your edges, but because this is now finished, you are now just finishing off this centerpiece on the back here, okay? So there is nowhere for any overlap to now go. So there's no overlap required on the back of this bag. So you're literally filling in the center and you're just adding just up until the edges here, okay? So on the back of this one, I didn't actually replicate, I've got wet hands, soapy hands, hang on. I didn't replicate what I'd done on the front. I did a little cutie patootie little bow here on the back, a little rose actually, but I did do my graduation. But you can see that it's just finished off. There's no overlap. Okay, so when you're doing that, I just wanted to just quickly show you, without going into too much detail, how you would just come round and you would literally just go within about a centimetre of the edge, okay? Don't have it going over. Right. So then you can you can completely replicate exactly the same thing on this side as well. I mean, I would start off by going in the same direction as you were going in and doing all the colours over one another and doing your graduation right up to the top, yada, yada. Uh, but just don't go over the edge and then add all your fl flowers in the so, same way. So okay. you don't go over the edge. Sorry, I know I keep saying the same thing. Right, shut up, Gillian. I think it's good okay, to so then you're going to you rub don't. this until it no longer moves. You're going to rub it with the net on it for about half an hour. Okay, how do you know when it's rubbed enough? Well, you need to make sure first of all, that you only rub this with the taut net over the top. It's completely pointless rubbing it with the net moving. Make sure you're t 
your, your net is really taut. And then after about half an hour, you can keep checking it, but it should get to the point where you rub your hand across it and it no longer moves. It doesn't sway around. See, at the moment, it sways around from side to side, okay? Do you want to do that on super close up? So you can see how that's swaying around from side to side. After about half an hour, that will stop um, swaying around. And then we're going to get into the rolling. So let me just quickly outline that for you. Um, I'm going to just put it into my mat and show you, even though it's sopping wet and unfinished. But this is what you do with your rolling. So you're going to get your mat, okay, portrait in front of you. I'll just get rid of that. Uh, pretend this is finished. I know it's not, but pretend it's finished, okay? All right, and then you're going to roll it up really, really, really tightly, okay? So the tighter you can roll this up, the better. Don't do it really loose, it's much harder. And then you're rolling it like this 20 times, plenty of pressure, 20 times backwards and forwards, okay? And you want, you want to hear the grinding of the, of the bamboo slats. Oh, 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 yes, I've got a question. Oh, I've yes, got a question. Go yes, yes, yes. So Maddie Hughes on Facebook is asking, when you start rolling, how do you prevent wrinkles? The first uh, signs of ageing. <laughs> the first signs of ageing. Um, I've actually completely missed out um, a step. Sorry, I was oh. so keen to get to oh. the rolling. You would actually go and rinse it before you do the rolling. I was keen to show um, whoever was wanting to know about rolling. Uh, you would actually go and rinse it first. You wouldn't have all this soap here. And then you would do the rolling. When you are rolling it, though, um, it will get wrinkles in it. And that's absolutely fine. And you don't really want to worry about that. So obviously, there's not going to be as much soap because you've gone and done your first rinse. But then when you are rolling it up, uh, really, really tightly. It is going to get wrinkles here, and I'm sure you can see them. I'll tell you what, why don't I just change mats? I'm just going to use my finished bag to demonstrate this rather than that very, very soapy one because it wouldn't be soapy. So when you're rolling it up, the, the key thing here is to roll it up really, really tightly, and you can see it will buckle and you will get wrinkles, but it doesn't matter. Just ignore that, okay? You're rolling 20 times in that direction. Then you're gonna turn it 90 degrees clockwise. You're gonna roll it up again. You're gonna go 20 times in that direction and so on, and you're gonna go that way, then that way, then that way. That's a full roll, okay? Then you turn it over and you do 20, 20, 20, 20, okay? Then you go back to the sink, you rinse very hot, very cold. Then you chop the top open. Let's go back to this one for that. So eventually, after you've done all of that, you chop the top open by, by sticking your scissors in here, okay? And you do just chop along the top. I know you're all thinking, oh my God, you're ruining your bag. Well, it's okay. I'm probably not going to finish making this one, if I'm honest. Um, so you do just chop the top open like this, and then you can see the templates in there. And I'm just going to remove it out of here, although it's not really ready to have it removed, just to show you what, what happens. And then you're left with what's around it, okay? And then you need to felt your edges. You're gonna felt your edges, you're gonna cut your handle, you're gonna felt that edge as well if you've cut that. And then at that point, you can then go back to the sink. It should be really, really well felted. It should almost look by, uh, like this at that point, okay? You're gonna come back to it, and then you're gonna do a final roll. So you want to make sure that by the end, it's pretty much soap free, and then you're in control of how much more it shrinks by, okay? so. If you're rolling it this way, it shrinks more this way. So if you find that your, your bag's very long and thin, you roll it this way, it's gonna make it go that, down that way. If you find that your bag is very short and squat and fat, then you want to roll it side to side this way. So rolling it this way will shrink it this way, okay? But do make sure you do a full roll, okay? So that's 20 that way, 20 that way, 20 that way, 20 that way. Questions, okay. questions. Go ahead. Okay, uh, so when you rinse it before rolling, is it hot or cold water yes. or both? Yes, so all of this is in the instructions in the kit, okay? So it's all come with complete instructions. But when you're first rinsing this, firstly, you need to make sure it's rubbed sufficiently. So you've got to make sure that that's had about half an hour uh, rub on both sides. You've got to rub both sides, okay? Don't go and rinse it before it's rubbed sufficiently. Then you do rub it in lukewarm water because you don't want to shock it, okay? okay? Then you do your first roll, 
then you're going to do another rinse in slightly hotter water then you're going to roll it a little bit more then you're going to cut the top open cut your handle and then finally you can it's up to you finally how much you you rinse it by you can either do you want to come back to me for a sec chris you can either if you rinse it uh in very hot water it will shrink more so if you find that your bag's getting smaller and smaller and smaller uh then you might think oh i don't want it to get any smaller than that uh so you might you might stick to a far more lukewarm situation and then it won't shrink as much. So that tepid lukewarm situation always shrinks the least, okay? And then if you want it to shrink more and it's not very well held together because perhaps you didn't rub it enough, <laughs> then you would use hotter water. Um, and then, you know, there's no reason why you can't pour boiling water over it as well, actually, to really increase shrinkage a lot. So you're in control at the final point you know once you've cut, cut this taken that out cut this felted it da, 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 and you're right at the end then you really want to um it's up to you I, how, how hot i you feel go. i feel that everybody is concerned about how they felt the edges after you've cut it open oh, a golly, number of okay. people have asked you okay you, so well after you've cut it open i know i am because we're running out of time after you've cut it open and this is all in in greater detail in my other youtube videos uh, particularly one from a long time ago actually where I, I do go through from completely from beginning to end about how to make a bag but you know when you cut it open you're you're just manipulating those cut edges because they will essentially be quite fluffy otherwise so you're just taking the soap and water and you're just spending five or ten minutes just going along felting the cut edge and then when you cut the handle shape as well same thing it's a cut edge so again you need to sort of just manipulate it until you get enough and I, I'm a stickler for that I like it to be really well felted I don't like the fluffy edges so I like it to, I just spend quite a long time just manipulating this cut edge manipulating this cut edge uh, with the soap and you can feel when it's felted because it feels harder and it doesn't feel so soft and fluffy and it feels felted so you need to do that before you do that final rinse and final roll hopefully that's explained it all uh, Maddie on Facebook says I often find the inside isn't felted enough how can I solve that um, so when, when you've opened it up and you've taken the template out, a bit like here, although I haven't rubbed it at all, obviously, you can get your hand in with some soapy water, spray some soapy water inside, get your hands nice and soapy, and just get your hand in there and just carry on rubbing on the inside, a bit at the same time that you're doing your edges and your handle. Do it then, rub the inside until you're happy. And of course, this is completely reversible. So obviously, not that one I'll turn the other one inside out for you so it's completely reversible you can turn it inside out so if you find that for some reason the inside isn't felted enough as long as it can withstand being turned inside out you can just turn the whole thing inside out and you can get your uh, it might be easier to do it by getting your rubbing it from the outside and if necessary then you can put the net back over it if you feel like it's really fragile and it might fall to bits Jay Allen uh She's she's uh, she tried to make an ickle pickle bag. Yes. And got into a pickle got and had trouble keeping the edges tight around the template, ah, particularly at yes. the top and yes. at the sides, yes. top yes. side edges. Yes. Any tips? Yes. Well, just like I was showing you earlier, just keep pushing it in. Yeah. You know, it, you're in control of it. So when you when you've brought those edges round from the previous side, that's the point at which you need to keep the edges really tight against the template so if you let it splay out then well, and, and while you're rubbing it as well just keep an eye on that don't let it splay out otherwise you will end up with a ridge going around the outside um just keep just keep it in your mind that you need to keep it tight against the template I, edge i think she also had issues when it was drying uh getting wrinkly Hmm. It, if you've got issues with it being wrinkly when it's drying it sounds like it's not been rubbed for long enough and believe me I know because I've run so many workshops bag making workshops no one ever wants to rub it for long enough and people perpetually say to me is it, rubbed long? is it rubbed now can I go and rinse it and I'm like no you need to rub it for longer and they like give me evil eyes but if you don't rub it for long enough it doesn't work properly at the end of the day so you just like need to drift off, listen to an audio book or something and just rub it for as long as it takes for it to feel fully felted. And you'll know, you will know, you won't need to ask or question because it will roughen. It will feel rougher. It will feel felted. It will feel more together and it won't feel so fragile and like it's about to fall apart. And it's not until you're sure that that's happened that you should then go and uh, rinse it and then roll it. 
and then you won't get it being wrinkly and fluffy at the end. Um, right. The only other reason for that would be that you haven't rolled it enough. So you could re-wet it, you could put some more hot water on it and you could re-roll it. That might help as well. Can you do dry felting on the other side, brackets inside, when it's dry? You can, but you'll end up with fluff, the, the other side of it, coming through on the inside of the bag. So as long as you're never going to turn it out and make it reversible, then yes, you can. You just need to put a piece of uh, foam inside and then you can needle felt anything. You anything. Needle anything. Anything. Yes, you can. Okay. Is that all the questions? I think so. Okay, fabulous. So. All right, so um, so if you want to buy any of our kits to make the bag that I've just shown you, so we've got Mini Miss Millicent and Magnificent Millicent. This one needs a large felting uh, mat. Okay, you won't get this one in the small one, but um, this one just needs a mini mat. All the lampshades, you can use the code Millicent15, M-I-L-L-I-C-E-N-T-1-5. We'll give you 15% off in the checkout box on our website okay that's where you put that just don't just send it to me randomly on a message <laughs> you need to put it in the discount box on the website okay so moving swiftly on next week i'm very excited because my new jewelry kit is here and finished and i'm going to be demonstrating that to you next week i don't know if you've been able to see that i've been wearing any of these things so this is the necklace i don't want you to get a, i don't want you to zoom in on my wrinkly neck but basically oh don't get it confused with my other necklace that's the necklace it's got cherries at the bottom and there's all beads and words and gloriousness okay matching bracelet then um here's actually you can do a close-up on this chris uh here's the anklet which hello there we go oh Sorry, there's the anklet. I'm wearing one of the rings as well. There's the bracelet. Let me just take the bracelet off. There's one of the bracelets. Okay, this one says love. This one says happy days. The anklet says happy days. Oh, and here's another bracelet. Okay. Uh, with all, and so next week, I'm going to be showing you how to make these. I'm going to be showing you how to do these little flowers uh, with the beads. Okay. So if you want to join in with that, the new kit is now available on our website. It's called Speedy Beady. Okay. Sounds a bit like speedy boarding which always makes me laugh. Uh, also sounds a bit like Flegel Beader, which also makes me laugh, but it's called Speedy Beady, and there's loads in it. So there's loads, you can make more than I've just shown you and outlined here. Um, there's loads of beads in it and loads of shizzle in it and you get five meters of the beading elastic. Okay, final thing is we have a giveaway that finishes giveaway. tomorrow. Giveaway. I've had my finger hovering He's on that. His finger's been Ooh, poised, poised. All right, and the giveaway finishes tomorrow. There's a caption competition on my Instagram grid and my Facebook, and it's of some some rather fetching looking chaps wearing some slightly dated 1970s styly fing fingerless mitts and hats and balaclava. Funny photo. Anyway, it's a ca caption competition. If you think you've got the funniest caption, you just like the photo you put it underneath and then you tag someone else who might be interested and that's you entered and what you can win is a weaving loom okay a giant weaving loom it's not giant a large weaving loom okay which comes with shuttles and it comes with a bit of warp thread as well i think and more importantly than that ooh, crash bang look more, you can win also win one of our new fluff disco project bags Oh, no sound effect. I thought you were uh, going uh, I, have, oh, I've, I oh, haven't done oh. one yet. He hasn't done one yet. Yeah. I thought you were going to do it live. Okay. Fluff Disco Project Bag, um, where if you put your fluff or your yarn inside, basically it has a party, it has a disco while you're not using it. That's the idea behind that. If you are Spanish, because I've had this a few times now, uh, si necesitas subtítulos, in Espanol, espere hasta que el, que el video esté on YouTube y luego puede activarlos. Eh? Say what? Claro que sí, claro que sí. Eh, eh, mi cariño. Anyway, that's all I've got <laughs> in Spanish. Who knows what you I'm not actually just sure said. what I just said. I said, um, if you would like the subtitles in Spanish, then you have to wait until the video is uploaded to YouTube and then you can activate that and put them on, is what I said. Okay, so hopefully there's not a load of Spanish people going, 
Oh okay. my god, she's very rude. Uh, and I haven't said something awful. I once asked when we were in Spain for a bread roll at breakfast, and I think I ordered, well, I said a bull, didn't I? Or something? Yes, you said yes, two I, bulls. I ordered two bulls instead of two, I think, is it burros? I don't know, there was a whole confusion anyway over a bread roll and a bull. So anyway, hopefully I haven't done the same thing there. Hola, hijo. Hola, hija. If you're watching, uh, hija. That's it. Hijos. Hija. And um, I'm going to see you next week, <laughs> hopefully at 11 a.m. on the 28th of March. Oh, happy first day of spring, which is today. And then the 28th of March, next Sunday, is my birthday boxing day. Spring. Uh, birthday boxing day. Yeah, so it's the day after my birthday next Sunday. But I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here. And I'm going to be making my new jewellery crit, Speedy Beady. So I'll see you then. Uh, have a good Sunday. Bye for now. It's chilly and glad rise. It's chilly and glad rise. It's chilly and glad rise. Proper Torium. It's chilly and glad rise. It's Julian Glamour, 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 it's Julian Glamour,